This is Renee Rubicava with Odonet. And today I want to talk a little bit about the ArcGIS API for JavaScript 4.0 documentation. So I talk a lot about um, application development and uh, some detailed stuff about the JavaScript API. But I haven't really talked too much about the actual documentation itself and all the improvements that have been done for the documentation in this release. So here we are at the home page for the documentation for the ArcGIS JavaScript API. And one thing to keep in mind is that everything that I talk about, uh, everything that's in my book, and that's on the blog, and all my videos and everything, uh, those are a lot of uh, detailed use cases, um, kind of some uh, really nitty gritty, uh, in the dirt kind of stuff. Uh, but all of that really, uh, the source for all the information comes from the documentation. And uh, you could find a lot of uh, details in the documentation uh, just by looking for it. So first off on the home page, you're gonna get a quick snippet that shows you how you can add the API to your page. A CDN for the JavaScript and a CDN for the CSS. And I've also got a link here back to the 3.16 uh, version of the docs. So first, let's look at the home page. Uh, they've got some nice little quick links to uh, tutorials on how to start with the first app, um, how to get started with the widgets, uh, how to work with the ArcGIS platform when you're working with the JavaScript API. There are some sample applications down here, and there's a really cool little animated GIF for working with subsurface data here. I thought this was kind of neat when I was looking at this. And these are pretty good uh, sample applications that you can look at to get an idea of the capabilities uh, that you can do with this uh, JavaScript API. And if you go down further, you're gonna see uh, some snippets from uh, the latest discussions going on on GeoNet related to the JavaScript API. And there are some videos down here related to um, the API itself, uh, talked about a dev summit, as well as a dev summit sessions that are in here, and uh, another video on working with the Geometry Engine and 3D web apps. And of course, it's got all the links to social media, the ways you can keep in, uh, up to date with the API, uh, follow the announcements on Twitter, uh, check out the repos on GitHub, uh, you can uh, check out the GeoDev account on Facebook, um, just go to the GeoNet community for the JavaScript uh, API and you, know, you can always email or contact uh, for feedback on the API. So if we jump back up here to the top of the page, uh, we have a link here going to the 3.16 version of Docs. And I just wanted to go here and give you an idea of the uh, changes that have happened. So the documentation for the 3x version of the API is great. It, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here and it's a pretty big uh, code base. Right, and one of the things with the API, it's always been a little uh, tricky. You no, know, I mean, we got the guides in here, but when you go to the reference, you kind of have to know what you're looking for ahead of time, right? So let's say I want to learn some more about the geometry engine, okay? So if I want to learn more about the geometry engine, I'm looking in here, and I'm not sure, is the geometry engine going to be in the plugins? Um, okay, is it going to be in the process? Okay, no. Uh, is it task? It's not a task. I'm not talking to a service, Geometry Engine. Um, okay, so it'll be in Geometry. All right. It's just those little kind of things, right? And there's uh, various things here. So Smart Mapping. So, okay, where would Smart Mapping be? So Smart Mapping is not a plugin. Uh, it's not a process. Is it Renders? No, it's not. Um, don't see it. Ah, here it is. Yeah, it is in Renders. There it is. Right, so this kind of uh, things you have to do to kind of walk through with the API and all the information is here and it's great information. You're going to learn a lot by going through it. But uh, one of the big improvements that's been done just in the reference alone for version four of JavaScript API is the ability to just search. So right off the bat with the reference, they've kind of grouped uh, a lot of the modules together. So everything related to the maps and the views is up at the top. Layers, next, symbology, the renders, and widgets, and other things down here. So a really quick reference to find stuff. The other thing you can do is just start typing. So I'm interested in geometry engine, and there we go. 
I'm going to start getting all references to Geometry Engine here. Uh, I'm interested in learning about, let's see here, uh, anything using sublayers, right? Ah, there we go. So sublayers in the map image layer. Awesome. So that's a quick way to be able to just search the API references and find information about that. So if I do something like go to layers and if I go to, uh, actually not layers, just go to map. So let's go right up here to the map itself. And we start looking through some of this documentation here and we're gonna get some really great little code snippets to give you an idea of how you're gonna use these modules inside your own application. And we also have uh, links here going to other uh, areas inside the documentation uh, for samples or for other related documentation that you can look at. Now, when you're looking at this documentation here, you get a, a quick little uh, table for the properties and they call it a property overview here. And let's look at something like uh, the layers property for the map. So if I click on layers here, I see here that it's got this little tag called the autocast. All right, so click on that tag and I can learn what this is about. And now I'm taken to the guide page, the guide page that explains autocasting. That's a great useful feature. No longer do you have to wonder um, about these little details about the API. And now you can learn about how autocasting works inside the ArcGIS JavaScript API. And we didn't talk about the guide itself. So the guide is split up into these various sections here. And like I said, this is the autocasting section, so you can get uh, more familiar with that. But you also just could go right to the Discover 4x section here, and it's going to have links to talk about uh, the uh, consistencies in the API, uh, support for 3D, uh, so talk a little bit about some accessor stuff and property changes in here. Um, we go to properties, and this is talking more about, uh, and I've talked a lot about accessors before for the API, but this is talking about uh, some details about introducing you to those concepts of watching for property changes instead of having to listen for all these different events. That's discussed here. Uh, it talks about promises, on working with promises in the API, um, understanding them. Right, so we have this uh, dot then, so understanding what the then method does and how that works. Uh, from JSON, so there are particular instances where you could use this from JSON method within the API. Um, and it's really something that's more useful if you're working directly with the ArcGIS REST API. And they even link back to that documentation if you want to get familiar with it, which is right here. So you can kind of see how this works here, but uh, typically the constructor methods are easier to use than using the from JSON. These are kind of a fringe case of things you want to do, but they still talk about it. Uh, it's still in the SDK and the documentation. So we are giving you an idea of how you might want to use that inside your own application. Maybe you want to save uh, data to local storage and you have to stringify it as a JSON string, and then you won't need to rehydrate it uh, back from JSON. You could use this from JSON method to do that. Then we talk about uh, some localization in here in the guide and you know, how you can set that up. This is a particularly really important thing that you want to learn about, especially if you're working on applications that are used internationally. Okay, so we, we typically, um, here in the US anyways, developers tend to focus on building apps for uh, US centric uh, customers. Uh, but you also have to remember that a lot of these apps are going to get used uh, internationally. Um, you may have to support various languages and locales. So this is something to just be aware about. Uh, you know, we got a little section here and get the API. Like I said, there's a whole lot in here. I won't go into detail on everything, but you have things all the way down from working with the, the view and the UI, the styling things. Um, oh, this one's kind of cool here. Uh, if I go down to this Esri icon font. So working with the different um, Calcite icons that you can use inside the API. And they've got all the different names you could use here um, that are available to you. Now these are typically going to be used in, um, if you've uh, seen stuff about the uh, custom actions in the pop-up templates and you want to have a custom U, uh, icon there, you could use this. Uh, so you, these are all the different uh, class names available to you for that. So if you want more information on that, you should go and check out um, the Calcite web 
repos that are on GitHub that will teach you a bit more about uh, Calcite specifically, how that works. This is a section here in Bower, right? So this is talking more about uh, the Dojo build system. The API is built on top of Dojo, uh, if you weren't aware of that. So, uh, and that's because it uses uh, AMD to build the modules because there's a lot of runtime um, things you need to do, especially when you're working with internationalization and uh, locales that are in runtime, you need to know what the locale of the browser is. You need to uh, dynamically load modules based on uh, what your browser um, uh, locale is going to be. And there's also instances where you don't want to uh, just have the whole API available to you. This is a large API. The uh, ArcGIS API for JavaScript has to support, um, not, I mean, the whole ArcGIS platform, which includes uh, ArcGIS Online, it includes ArcGIS Server, it includes uh, on-premise portal for ArcGIS Server, it also includes um, use cases for uh, certain applications like the story maps or uh, dashboards or um, any of the other uh, JavaScript uh, Esri applications that are built out there that might have some uh, special needs are built into the API, right? So it has a lot of different scenarios it has to support, plus a very large customer base and a lot of enterprise customers that have different types of security uh, needs and authentication needs. So the whole API itself, if you were to load it all together into one giant massive file, uh, would probably be about, I don't know, I think it was like 20 megabytes last time I tried just to test out. Uh, you don't want to load that in your browser. <laughs> you don't need the whole thing at once. So with AMD, what you could do is you could load the um, core modules you know are going to be used for your application when you build it. And then you also have some uh, dynamically loaded uh, modules uh, that you want to pull in as needed during runtime your application. Maybe you're on one page that does something and you go to another page that does something else. And uh, that's really where AMD shines to be able to do that kind of stuff. So what we have here are instructions on how to use Bower. Uh, has a release of the ArcGIS JavaScript API that you can use. And this uh, talks a little bit about how to do the custom build of your application to try and really get uh, a highly optimized build of your app with the API that you can use to deploy for your applications. So read this over. It's really interesting. Um, this is really for the hardcore. This is like uh, if you uh, want to get real deep with the API and custom builds, this is where you want to go. So let's see here. There's even a section here on PhoneGap. So if you want to talk a little bit about um, how to use PhoneGap with the API, that way you can uh, deploy the device in a uh, you know, uh, native environment, uh, work with Apache Cordova, uh, things like that. Uh, if you're working on mobile devices, this might be something you would be interested in and you want to take a look at. So I highly suggest reading this over and get a little bit familiar with it. And there's a section here on migrating from 3X, how to choose a version. So there are certain features that maybe you need out of 3X at this point that are not available in 4.0. Um, one of the main ones really is editing. So if you need to do editing in your application, uh, uh, the 3X version of the JavaScript API is probably better suited to you than the 4X version, right? So keep that in mind. And this will give you a nice idea of a things that uh, how you might want to choose which version of the API you want to use. This is a nice little table here that kind of explains on uh, what's in what version, uh, what's coming, uh, what's coming soon. Uh, give you a, a pretty good idea of how you want to look at that. And there's a detailed functionality matrix for a full comparison if you want to look that one over. And then there's a section on migrating from 3x to 4. Uh, and like I said, this just links to other parts of the uh, documentation that goes into more detail so you can learn a lot more more about the API and some of the nuances you might need to know going from uh, version 3 to version 4. And again here's that uh, detailed functionality matrix I was talking about earlier. Uh, if you're interested in looking this over there might just be something in here that's gonna mean you want to stick with the 3x version before you move to 4 and give you an idea of when that would become available. Doesn't mean you shouldn't get familiar with 4.0 though. I mean, 
This is the future of the API right here. Um, so you do want to uh, learn it, at least if you're not going to be using it for your main development, it's something you should get up to speed with anyway. And let's just jump over to the sample code real quick. So the sample code, just like the API reference, is completely searchable. So again, if I want to learn, find a sample using Geometry Engine, and uh, I want to quickly look for that, I just start typing into the search up here, and it's going to go ahead and bring up uh, some samples doing that. So I got this buffer in 2D and 3D here that's going to go ahead and show me how to use Geometry Engine. And they also organize the samples down uh, into these groupings here, some mappings and views, uh, searching, and analysis. Now, there's even bits in here in the widgets, so you'll learn a bit about the widgets using the views UI, right? So I think this is a uh, pretty uh, key for people to do to get familiar with this uh, the UI interface to add little custom elements to the UI, even if it's just a, a button here and there, or your custom logo is shown here. Um, and you can even sh uh, learn how to use the widgets with React. If you want to uh, build your components using React, you can do that, and it's pretty seamless to do within the API itself. All right, so that's just a quick overview of the documentation for the ArcGIS API for JavaScript and some of the difference between 3x and 4x for the documentation, how easy it is to find stuff. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a large, um, it's a lot of documentation available to you because it's a large API that does uh, quite a bit of things. And uh, uh, 4x, it does not have all the features that 3x currently does, but it's gonna get there. And this documentation is gonna grow as well. So the ability for you to be able to go ahead and just quickly find things inside documentation is a great benefit and something that I hope you take advantage of. All right, so go out and do some code. Thank you.